It is finally here. The preseason of the Cycle Frontier has launched, and to celebrate that, I've put together a rapid fire selection of the most important tips that you need to get started playing the game. So, without any more talking, let's dive right in. Okay, I lied. Before the tips begin, here's my quick overview of the game. So, really, the main objective of the Cycle Frontier is to drop from the space station onto one of currently two maps on the planet of Fortuna 3. Once there, you loot materials and complete missions for three different factions that will gradually allow you to craft and purchase better gear. So speaking of factions, my first tip, there are three, Korolev, Osiris, and the ICA. Completing missions with each of these will level up these factions, and as you level up the factions, you'll gain access to better weapons and equipment to purchase from each faction in the space station. Missions normally require you to either loot specific items, drop certain items off at a specific location, kill AI or players, either in a certain location or with specific weapons. You can also level up factions by selling items to them, which will earn you faction experience. The rarer the item, the more it is worth, and the more faction XP it will earn you when you sell it to them. Item rarity can be defined by the colour that is highlighted, or by selecting the item. Common, uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary are the different rarities of items. Bonus tip, the old currency that you'll find frequently on the map can be sold for its equivalent value and is not worth holding onto. For looting missions, you'll be told the type of lootable container that the item will usually be found in. Lootable containers will glow with a white outline when looked at. Loot management is based on weight and not the number of spaces like in a game such as Tarkov. An item weight is indicated and so is the total weight of your storage space. This can be confusing as your safe pockets only look like they hold three items when in fact you can keep adding items up to the weight limit. Keys, for instance, weigh very little and so many can be stored in safe pockets. Unlike in Tarkov, if you die with a mission item in your safe pocket, you can still turn it in for mission progress. You don't have to survive the raid. Combat in the cycle is PvPVE. There are many different alien types on the planets that offer differing threat levels. As you get better gear, you can combat each of these creatures more easily. Small creatures called striders can be killed with one charged melee attack. This is very effective and much quieter than using weapons. This is Jeff. He's a dick. Early on, before you get good weapons, he'll be a pain to kill and he gets super angry and all around you just want to leave him alone. In my experience, gunshots in this game range out to about 1 to 200 meters, so if you hear shooting, it usually means the enemies are pretty close. Audio in general can be very loud. Enemy footsteps, particularly when sprinting, are very not noticeable, as is breathing. Speaking of breathing, when your character runs out of stamina, indicated by the bar at the bottom of your screen, they will start panting. Stamina is heavily decreased by jumping and should be managed carefully as having zero stamina in a gunfight can be a death sentence. Stamina can be recharged quicker by sitting in a crouched position. Armor with tactical in the name allows for greater stamina but with slightly reduced protection. Certain armor will also regenerate your health over an extended period of time but also offers reduced protection. There are two tools you can use for health regeneration, stims and medkits. Stims offer 25 HP, while medkits will heal you to full health and take significantly longer to use. Increased rarity of medical items means faster usage time. While fighting enemy players, you can tell the level of their armor by the color of the hit marker that you get when you do damage to them. Red hit markers mean a successful kill of an enemy. As of Season 1, weapons will have damage drop-offs, so you can no longer use SMGs for long-range engagements to take advantage of high fire rate. If you're still listening and you find these tips helpful, be sure to drop this video a like, comment uh, any of your own tips, and subscribe for more cycle content. Servers run for a total of 6 hours, with players entering and leaving servers continually. Storms will impact a map approximately every 20 minutes. During a storm, you cannot extract. They last for approximately 5 minutes. You can still move around during a storm, but if you are hit by lightning, it does do significant damage. Certain lootable plant and animal items can only be acquired during a storm. Storms reset the loot inside of buildings. However, if a player is hiding in a building during a storm, the loot will not reset. So be wary of entering a building with no loot after a storm. When you call in an extraction ship, an audible noise is heard, which can also be heard by other players nearby, alerting them to your presence. When a ship lands, you have until the purple bar fills up to extract successfully. It is often worth hiding nearby and making a last ditch attempt to extract to avoid any other players getting the jump on you. You can call in multiple extract ships, there is no need to board the ship if the situation is unsafe. On the space station you have quarters where you can upgrade the size of your stash to store more materials. 
You can also upgrade currency generators, which give you a constant stream of the two in-game currencies, K-Marks, which are used for items and weapons, etc., and Aurum, which is used for cosmetics and certain insurance. Speaking of insurance, there are two types of insurance in the game. Standard insurance, which you pay for with K-Marks, which will give you K-Marks in return for any items lost, and gear salvage, which will return the items to you if they aren't taken by someone else, or if they are, then they'll give you K-Marks instead. Really important to note this one, insurance fraud does not work in the cycle. If you throw away a gun or modify it in-game, you will not get it back through insurance in any form. Even if your teammate takes it off your body and dumps it somewhere, you will not get it back. So that's all for now. If you found any of these tips helpful, be sure to drop a like and subscribe for lots more cycle content in the future. Cheers.